I got a whole bunch of tuning done and I got it as best as I think I can get it I think two to three is still a hard upshift um, and it, it really jerks from park into reverse and from reverse into drive and there's no setting to actually um, tell me what uh, or, or how to adjust that now I, I tried turning my idle down but when I put the idle down to about 600 it stalls right up until I keep it where it is so the, the tack still kind of bounces around I don't really like that so much um, but and for some reason I'm not seeing a tack on my computer screen here so that must be uh, some of those the big coil of wires that's not hooked up um, all the other gauges are working my uh, voltage it's charging nicely my uh, so I'm at 13 volts there um, trans temp is working and then the TPS is working even though to try and shut the um, or to try and smooth out the shifts I just raised my top uh, limit for my TPS so it always thinks that I'm kind of in a part throttle because it's still a very aggressive shift so I don't really like that too much but watch what happens when I stick it into reverse it just like you can hear the clunk and it just jerks way too hard so I know I know seatbelt um, upshift and even in the drive like I, I get that I, can't, I get that jerk I can't stop it so kind of frustrating I'm not happy with that and the second to third shift so we'll uh, keep working on that we'll drive it to town again and see uh, I got the power steering much better with a different pump. Um, I used the Hydro Boost one off of one of the 4VTs I had. And uh, I don't know, I know it's cool. So, I spent a long, spent a very long time tuning this tranny and I'm still not really happy with it. I'm in that one, second to third, pisses me off. The fourth is as smooth as can be. And then, torque converter locks up beautifully. Um, it drives super nice actually, but um, ugh, I don't like that. And then that the stupid tack keeps doing that too. I can't put that sensor any closer to that uh, gear, so I don't know what that's about. Um, overall, pretty disappointed with D-Stroke. Even though the customer's happy with the truck, he's driving it. He goes, oh, it's perfect. Let me go. Let me have it. And I'm like, ugh, it's a little more tuning, a little more wiring yet. Um, I just got to put the plug in there for the button for the uh, preheater and then uh, it's just about ready but yeah I'm a little bit frustrated with this job so here we go. So this is the fuse panel for a regular cab uh, long box truck with zero options. No cruise, no four wheel drive, no power windows, no power locks um, but they still use a full fuse panel. Uh, that still has all the fuses for the heated seats and the heated mirrors and all that crap um, but they just don't use it so most of this fuse panel is for nothing um, now there's also a fuse panel under the hood here just a small one that has more relays in there and that's for the holden windings they had to hot wire a relay here to uh, keep the holding windings going. That's in an earlier video if you want to look that up. Um, but I got a lot of flack from uh, Ford guys because I said I, I, I don't like working on the Fords because uh, the fuse panels aren't labeled. It clearly says fuse 12 and fuse 14, uh, relay 302. Now that's about as handy as my cats are at getting me my tools. So now you gotta look it up in the book, find the page, uh, line it up. Let's see uh, fuse 106. Well, that's on the next page. And what does that do? No, that's not it. And oh, waste of frickin' time. <laughs> so the Cummins. My thoughts on a Ford with a Cummins in it. Well, it sounds great. Uh, it's more reliable than the Power Stroke ever will be. A um, couple issues I have. First with D-Stroke. Shut up! I'm not even in gear. The transmission tuning is way more complicated than it needs to be. Um, I can get first to second nice. 
Um, second to third is jerky. It seems that no matter what I do, I can't seem to get it right. Um, there's there's graphs that you can change according so your shift up and your shift down points um, compared to where your TPS is. Now, first I gave it a 12 volt signal, and it needs to have a 5 volt signal. So according to the graph where the shift points are for your up and down shift and your clutch to clutch firmness depends on where your TPS is. Now you can change that any number between 0 and 100 anywhere between your TPS line. So you can literally do one shift and, and have it tuned a thousand different ways um, and making a tiny difference on each one. That's a waste of time it, it we don't need to be that specific with the shift a little dial that says shift between first and second uh, this um, TPS setting longer shift shorter shift harder shift softer shift that's all it is to it the Bowman controller on the GM 4L 80s and, and 60s much nicer to work with um, my speedo quit so nice one more thing to fix anyway the other issue with this Fummins is I've done a lot of wiring to it the preheater the charging system uh, wiring it up now, I know what I did and I labeled the wires as best as I could but for him to sell this truck to somebody else yeah it's got a Cummins in it but what happens when something breaks he traded it for a couple of used transmissions I think and that's basically what a four power stroke is worth he told me it's got 220,000 on it and it's had uh, band-aids on it since 100,000 K in uh, I hope it works for him um, he's gonna play with the shifting a bit see if he can get second to third a little better and then uh, we can figure it out from there between the going back and forth the D stroked and, and whatever else I have too much time into it as it is and the project took longer than uh, we both hoped it would I just want to talk a little bit about the conversions and the power strokes and why I harp on the on the Fords uh, the 7.3s were a great engine same with the 6.9s uh, the 6.9 actually had thicker cylinder walls uh, it, the only issues with them were they were uh, not great on fuel and uh, a couple stupid design idiocracies if you ask me like the plastic return lines on the on the injectors with the little rubber hoses that always crack and dry out and leak so that was almost a biannual thing is replacing those uh, but they were a very reliable engine I've seen lots go over a million kilometers there's a, a greenhouse down the road that ships to the states and and they have many many trucks with well over a million clicks my issues are with the 6, the 6.4, and the 6.7, and if you actually sit down and punch the numbers, that doesn't make sense owning one. Um, the extra you pay for the diesel along with the higher maintenance and one major breakdown does not cover the fuel savings that, that you're going to see with a diesel. The old mechanical ones were simple. If they're not running, they're, it's because it's not getting fuel, but the new ones, there's just too much that can go wrong. I've seen a uh, few fleets now go from all the diesels back to V10 gases. The 6.7 is a much improvement over the, the two pre predecessors, but again, very expensive. Uh, the trucks are, uh, you don't get your money back. So do we put a Cummins in it? Well, the issue with the swaps is if you can't do it yourself, you're stuck with the one guy that uh, put, the, put the install in. Um, I'm that guy for a few people and, and I, I don't plan on going anywhere for a while but if you buy somebody else's conversion you pretty much have to re-engineer the whole thing to try and figure out what they did. I've had some issues tuning this uh, 110 transmission but uh, if you went with a Dodge transmission you'd have to make your own drive shaft and which U-joints do you use? Do you use a Dodge transmission uh, on the output shaft? Uh, did you somehow cobble the drive shaft together? I ran into that with my Silverado. So if you have to uh, figure that out, uh, a simple breakdown of a U-joint will take three times as long because you ordered the wrong U-joint or it doesn't fit or simple things like that, mounts, uh, intercooling piping, things like that. Would you swap it yourself? Well, if you're stuck with a power stroke, you really don't have much choice. The resale value is very low on them because there are so many of them broken talking to the scrapyard guy this morning he goes we don't really have many fords in here because the only thing that anybody ever asked for is the engine and you can piece it out little by little he goes it'll take forever and all the engines are done every truck that he gets has a bad engine in it there is no 
F-350 diesel in a scrapyard with a good engine. <laughs> Plain and simple, unless they got into an accident. And there's people waiting for those engines so they get yanked out before they even get put into the yard. So if you can do it yourself, yeah, it's super cool. The swaps are awesome, uh, turns heads. It, 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 it is a nice accomplishment to be able to re-engineer, reverse engineer a, a truck, make it run, make it better, make it efficient. But it's gonna take you a long time to get that money back. You're gonna have 10 grand into it. Uh, if you wanna do a nice clean swap, it's, it's 10 grand no matter how you look at it. 12 valves, in my opinion, is still one of the best engines. Simple, reliable. Um, take care of it and it will still last 10 times longer than any power stroke out there. I actually have a guy that hauls campers from down south. We're going to be tuning some of his trucks soon and hopefully building him a, a Cummins rat rod too. Um, he's got one truck, that's his baby, he's got 1.8 million kilometers on it. A couple transmissions but the engine has still not had the head taken off. And that's what good service does and, and good service on a power stroke yeah, you'll, you'll get 300,000K out of it, but then that's it. There's, the, there's too many things that go wrong. So yeah, that's my two cents on the Power Strokes. Uh, four guys, I know I give you a hard time. They're nice looking trucks, they ride nice. Um, but to me, it's like that good looking girlfriend that is really annoying and too expensive to keep around. If she could be quiet and just kind of sit there and look pretty, that's fine, but you need her to do stuff too. And uh, <laughs> looks don't account for everything. So yeah, here we go. Uh, on to the next swap, which uh, is coming up. We're going to get into some LS swaps, uh, convertibles, uh, and Mercedes. So <laughs> we'll see what happens there. Here we go. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Good riddance. Here we go. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because you never know what you're going to see next week on DeBoss Garage. If you like what you see, there's a lot of stuff happening to help support the channel. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. I think if I don't behave myself and I go to hell, that dinging will be there in hell waiting for me. I hate that dinging so much. And just let me, let me pull the key out a little bit just so that it stops. No, no, wait. Uh, 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 shit. <laughs> you pull the key all the way out to make that dinging stop. And then you chuck the key because I get so mad at it. Where the hell's the key? I hate four!